Hi, I'm Phil Lowe at the Furniture Institute of Massachusetts, and this is The Art of Woodworking. In this episode, what I'd like to show you is how we do go about cutting dovetails. And dovetails are used in different places when we build furniture. And I'm going to show you a couple of pieces here and point out some of the places where we actually use them. Okay, this is a little small dressing table that has a drawer. And you can see the dovetails are cut on the front here and also on the back. And uh, we have a little drawer bottom that slides out from underneath. On this low boy over here, we also have dovetails included in it as well. Not only in all three of these drawers, but we also have them in the vertical partition here, which uh, runs vertically here, and you can see the dovetails at the top and the bottom. And one other place that you can't see the dovetail is actually this top rail. It actually goes down into the top post, and I got an example over here that I'd like, just like to show you. Okay, this is a, uh, a sample of a uh, dovetail that goes into the top of a post. And the, uh, the dovetail um, actually will come out here. And this is actually one that's a little bit more complicated because we have a dovetail that goes into the rail as well. Uh, but the idea is that we have to cut an opening for the, uh, the dovetail to fit down inside. And it's a wedge shape so we can't pull apart if we start to pull it in one direction or the other. Now, uh, I just want to go over a little bit as far as the, uh, the terminology of uh, a dovetail. Uh, I, we have two different dovetails here. One's a through dovetail, which is on this side here, and one's a blind dovetail, which is on, on this side over here. And then we also have a third one, which is a slot dovetail or a sliding dovetail that's on the front, uh, the front edge of this. But if you look at the, uh, the through dovetail, you know, this uh, I have marked as the end of the, the board. Uh, these are the tails, and these are what the, are called the pins. Uh, on the blind dovetail, you know, this would be used for a drawer front because you wouldn't see the uh, dovetails coming through the end of the board like you do on this side here. So, um, but uh, they both have the same exact things. They have the pins and the tails. And uh, one of the things we have to know also is that the, uh, we're talking about a surface, an edge, and an end of the board. So that when I go to mark some of the things out, you're going to be able to see, uh, you know, when I refer to the end of the board, we want to make sure we're going off of the right, uh, right surface. Um, but on the bench here, if you can take a, a little look at what we got going on here, these are the tools that we need for dovetailing. And uh, the first thing that we're going to use is the, uh, the marking gauge to do some of the layout. Uh, then we're going to need to use a bevel square, which is an adjustable square. Uh, we're going to need a, 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 a square that we can do some measurements with. We got a, a, a variety of chisels here. Uh, we got a dovetail saw, a hand plane, a clamp, and a big old mallet. So um, we also have a small square that we do some of our checking with as well. This is a beautiful little uh, piece of equipment that's made by Sterrett out in Athol, Massachusetts. But the first thing that we need to do is to go ahead and prepare the pieces. And the pieces are prepared simply uh, the way that we did in episode two. So I'm going to just go ahead and uh, put a plane across the inside surface of this to make sure that this is perfectly flat. And then uh, we'll, go, we'll continue on from there. So we've got to get a nice flat surface to begin with. And sometimes it only takes one or two passes as we go across. And the main thing, now this would be the inside of my drawer. We don't plane the other side until we actually fit it into an opening. So what I want to do now is I want to check this for flatness here, which looks pretty good. And then we also want to make sure that this board is flat. I, I plane this edge straight already, so I want to make sure that this is square in this direction. Looks pretty good. And also square in this direction. And that looks good. So now we also have to have what might be the draw side. This is a nice little piece of pine that I'm going to use to do that. Uh, make that uh, the draw side. And again, I need to, you know, plane one surface flat here to begin with. And this would be the inside of the drawer as well. 
So I'll just put a hand plane across this. Okay, we want to make sure that that's flat. And take a little bit more out of the middle here. And that's looking pretty good. And now we want to make sure that we have a straight edge and that the end of this is square. And that looks pretty good. We also want to make sure that this is perfectly square in this direction because if we use our uh, marking gauge to do some of the layout, if, this ed if the edge of this or the end of this happens to be on an angle like so, what happens is the marking gauge would be sitting on that angle and I would be making a, a line that's parallel to an angled piece and it wouldn't you know, fit into the opposing part correctly. So the first thing that we need to do is to go ahead and lay out uh, some uh, the blind portion. I'm going to do the blind dovetails to start with. So I'm going to pick up my marking gauge. Now this marking gauge, I think we talked about a little bit the other day uh, in episode two. This has a, uh, a, a knife in it with a flat surface. And the head of the square is going to work, go off of the inside of the drawer. And that's how I mark the inside of the drawer. Now, I need to uh, make a line that's approximately uh, leaving about three, three sixteenths of an inch on the outside here so that I can have a good amount. And I'm going to scribe a line across the end of this. Nice and deep because we want to be able to put a chisel in there. Now with this exact same setting, and this is an important thing that you have to remember, is that this setting is going to mark out the, uh, the, the tailboard, which is this piece here. And I'm going to score this across the end. Again with a good deep cut so that I can get a chisel in there. And on the opposite side as well. And we also do the edges. Now, if you stop and think about this, since this setting is uh, the same on both, the distance from this line to the inside and the distance from the end of the board to this line are exactly the same. And that's one of the things that we have to make sure of that, that we do because otherwise what happens is it's not going to uh, fit correctly. And if we have to readjust the, uh, the, the marking gauge, it sort of introduces error into uh, the work. Okay, so the next thing that we have to do is we have to pick up the thickness of the, uh, what would, might be the draw side. So we're going to go ahead and tap this now. We want to make that exactly the same size. That looks pretty good. And we're going to scribe this on what is the inside face, which is right along here. I think I'll use this end next. Oh, I guess I'm going to use this end, uh, which is the inside face. Now, what's going on there is that this is the same thickness as our draw side. Okay. Now we have to uh, come up with an, an angle for the dove uh, for the pins. You know, we talk about pins and tail, uh, pins and tails all the time. Sometimes people cut tails for us. Some people cut pins for us. I'm a guy that likes to cut the pins for us. But in reality, if you're a really good craftsman, you should be able to do it either way. So, um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to face this towards you so that uh, you can see what I'm doing. And uh, we need to pick up an, an angle for the dovetail. And uh, a lot of time there's a lot of jibber jabber about what the angle should be. And, uh, you know, they talk about a six to one ratio or an eight to one ratio or something like that. And what they mean by that is that if we come over an inch along a baseline, like so, and let's just say we go up eight inches to a point here, like so, and we connect those. This would be the angle that we would set our bevel square to, like 
so. Like so. And that's the angle that we would use to make our, our pinned uh, angle. Now we have to come in a certain distance from the end, uh, from the edge. I usually go come in about a quarter of an inch and make my first angle this way and then do it on the opposite, uh, opposite edge. And then I usually will find the center and we'll bring a, a pin from there and we'll flip this over and do it the opposite way. And then we'll do another one in between. And a lot of times when you get good at this, you can just eyeball this. And you can tell, um, you can usually get fairly close just by, by looking. Now I'm going to go ahead and lay this out here. And we want to try to make these relatively consistent in size. I mean, if I wanted to, I could measure them, but uh, measuring them is, uh, takes a little bit more time. But Okay, that's my simple layout for the dovetails. Now I have to go ahead and drop lines down the back side of this. And this is the, uh, the straight line that I need to cut vertically off of the end of this board. And one more. Okay, that's the layout that we need for our pins. Now I have to saw these, and I have a, uh, a 15 point dovetail saw. And the difference between a dovetail saw and a back saw is that when you pick up the dovetail saw, the, uh, the back of the saw actually points at an angle because most of the time when we're cutting dovetails were cutting at an angle so they actually put the handle on so it helps uh, angle the saw so that your cuts are a little bit easier. Now I'm going to turn this around and uh, I'm going to get, get you to look over my shoulder while I make these cuts. Now when we saw we, one of the things you have to be careful of is that you make sure that the back of the saw, your wrist, your elbow, and your shoulder are all lined up. Because if you crowd yourself like this, what happens is your elbow hits your belly and it makes the saw want to, you know, go on a, on a curve. So we're looking to make sure that we're cutting in a good straight line like so. So uh, in this situation, what we're going to do now, we're just going to go right alongside the line and just make a couple of cuts down like so. And we're going to make our cut going over to the scribe line on the end of the board and then a, a scribe uh, down to the scribe line that indicates the uh, thickness of the drawer side. We'll just go along and cut these. And then we'll cut them in the opposite direction. Now that's, all, that's really all it takes. Now I'm going to go ahead and set up on the end of the bench here and I'm going to chop these out. Okay, I'm going to put the, uh, the board on the end of the bench here. Now one, I, one thing I have to do is I have to make sure that the board is supported underneath by the bench. If I have it hanging over like this and I start doing some of my chopping, what happens is when we get down to this thin part of the, uh, the dovetail, I might be too forceful and actually you know, chop right through the other side. So we want to make sure that the, uh, the back surface is supported by the bench top. And we're going to clamp this down uh, to the bench top with one of these Jorgensen clamps, which we'll put on right like so. And make sure that they're parallel. And now we're going to grab a chisel. And the chisel that I always grab in a situation like this is a half inch chisel, which is this one right here. And the reason for that is that there's less, uh, there's less resistance on a narrow chisel than there is a wide chisel. So if I tried to drive this wide chisel into the surface of the, uh, the, uh, the material that I'm working with, uh, this wide chisel is not going to go in as deeply as the, uh, the half inch chisel that I'm going to use here. 
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, put my chisel on the surface here. And what I'm looking for is that I want the distance from the back of the chisel to the line to be about a sixteenth of an inch away. And one of the ways that I'm able to handle that is I, I call walking the chisel. And what I mean by that is if I tilt the chisel to one side or the other and rotate it in my fingers like this, I can actually get it to where I want it to be without sitting here trying to line it up each time. So I'm going to go ahead and get this in position about a sixteenth from the line in between my two saw cuts and I'm going to make my first chop down this way. And I'm going to go all the way across doing all four of the, uh, the tails. And if you can get relatively close to the line without touching it, that's what we're after. Now I'm going to come back in and cut it from the opposite direction. And really what's happening here is I have we're, we're going to be splitting this material, so what I've done with my chisel now is I've cut across these fibers or these vessels with my chisel. Now I'm going to be coming in this way, and what happens is these are going to just split very easily when I uh, actually tap this in from the end. So I'm just going to go ahead and tap this like so, and you can see that these just fall out of here ever so easily. We'll get rid of those. Now, with my second round of cuts, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to angle my chisel to the same angle that I made the saw cut. So I'm cutting right down along the saw cut line. I can just butt it up against what I've already cut, and then I'm going to give this a really good whack. So I'm driving this chisel in to almost a full depth of the bevel. So I'm really making some good progress by giving this a good whack. And we're going to come back again and chip these out or split them away. Now what we're after is we're going to try to come to within a sixteenth of an inch of the, uh, you know, this, this line uh, which will be the blind portion of the dovetail. Okay, we'll go ahead and make another whack down this way. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut down along the angle of the dovetail. And I have to be a little bit more gentle when I do this because if I hit this too hard, I'm just going to split off the end. But what, what's, why I'm doing this is if you, you might be able to see a little triangle right inside here. And that's where the saw didn't actually cut. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and you know, tap that in like so. Just so it relieves that cut on the inside corner. And come back the other way. All right, make sure that this is tight. Bring this a little closer to the end of the bench here. Now, this is where I want to be about a sixteenth of an inch away from my scribe line. Okay, very good. Now, this is all roughed out and I need to start, you know, cleaning up these places uh, to the line. So if we take a close look at this, you can see that I still have a scribe line across here. I haven't really gotten down to the scribe line here. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, clamp this down in this direction so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, I'll put a clamp on here. I'm going to do, I'm going to show you two ways that we clean this up. Uh, there's one way, one way is I'm going to use a, a chisel and chop to my line. 
And then the second way, I'm going to actually put it in my vise and pair to my line. And uh, this, uh, you get, uh, you know, similar results, but, uh, you know, when you pair to the line, you actually get a, uh, you actually come out with something that's a little uh, closer to uh, being what you want. Uh, because when we chop to the line like so, I'm going to use a little wider chisel here. Sometimes what happens is the grain has a tendency to crush. But you'll notice when I go to chop this, I'm standing here looking at my chisel in this direction so that I can see whether the back is perpendicular to my work or not. So I'll just come down like so. And try to get into the corners. And we want to get that. Now, the beautiful thing about uh, this scribe line that I made, uh, when I made the scribe line, the, uh, on the surface of the board, there's actually a square cut and an angle cut that happens. And when I make that angle cut, what I'm going to do is I'm putting the bevel towards the angle and the flat of the chisel towards the flat side. So when we scribe that line with the marking gauge, you know, this line that's to that side is perf perfectly perpendicular and the, the uh, line to the waist side is actually angled. Okay, now I'm going to change positions and uh, I'm going to show you how I pair the, uh, the, these other two. So let's go over to the vise. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pair these, these two surfaces using a, uh, a pairing chisel. And a pairing chisel is a chisel that we use strictly for handwork. We don't do any chopping with. So what I'm going to do to start with is I'm going to put my chisel right where you can see right here where that scribe line was and some of it actually broke away. So I can rest my chisel on there without any difficulty. And what I do to start with is I make a couple angle cuts this way and then I take out the middle and then set it right on the line and make a cut all the way in. And what I'm looking for is that I'm trying to make a good angle cut or a cut that's perfectly parallel to the end. And then when I make the consecutive cuts, what I do is I only take about a sixteenth of an inch just using the corner of the chisel. That way I have complete control over my cuts. And we'll do that in the other side as well. Now we'll do this on the next one. So we got an angle cut, an angle cut, take out the middle with a couple of cuts, and then a sixteenth of an inch cut to either side. Now, if your chisels aren't perfectly sharp here, you're going to have a difficult time. Now, one of the things that I like to do at this point is to go ahead and make a check. And what I'm looking to do is I'm going to take my, this little square and I'm going to set it on the end of the board and I'm going to drop it down until it just touches where the scribe line is. And then I'm going to tighten this up and then I'm going to go and I'm going to put it inside here. And if it lifts, if it lifts the square up like so and rocks, that means that this surface is actually going uphill. And I'll check it here. This one looks pretty good. This one's got going uphill just slightly. You can see that that's rocking now. You see that? And we'll check this one as well. That one is the same. So we just need to go back and I'm going to angle my chisel up a little bit more. So that I just take material from the back. And we'll make another check. Do it again. So it's very important that these, these surfaces are parallel to the end of the board. Because if they are going uphill and we drive the other piece in, we'll end up with a gap on the inside. Okay. Uh, that one's
one's just still a tad high. And that one seems to be pretty good. Okay. Now that we have that taken care of, what I like to do now is I like to work on these, uh, the sides of the pins. And you might be able to see a little triangle. You can see this little triangle inside here. And that's from where the saw didn't actually cut. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a, my chisel, put it up on edge like so, and make you know, these cuts to try to get rid of that little triangle that's on the side of the pins. And one of the things I want you to notice is that I'm cutting in from this surface in this direction. I'm not cutting down from above because if I cut down from above, what happens is if the grain goes in one direction or the other, uh, the, the chisel will start to uh, make the cut and then it'll, the grain will follow you know, the grain line and it might in, undercut it or not cut it quite as much. So you want to cut it across the grain like so, as opposed to coming down from the top. This is looking pretty good. Now, the last check that I do is I'll take this uh, ruler out of my square and I'll actually use the uh, head of my square like so and I'll hold this up against the surface like this. And if I can bring this up against the uh, ruler and it looks a little bit, if it's square or if it's angled in this direction, it's undercut slightly. If it's angling in the opposite direction, it need, means that I need to take material right down from this bottom corner right here. So all of these are looking pretty good. And I can tell by sighting these. Now that one might need a little bit work on the bottom. And that one definitely does. So we'll go ahead and just take a little bit from the very bottom here. Now, if we happen to cut beyond the lines or whatever, it doesn't really matter that much because, you know, we, we're going to mark out these pins onto the tailboard and whatever these pins are paired to now is uh, what we're going to end up with. Now we've got to go ahead and make sure that the corners are cleaned out well. And then we're going to retreat back to the bench to get this last little bit along this scribe line. So here we go. All right, well, let's get this relatively close to the edge of the bench. We'll clamp this down. Now we'll take a, uh, a wider chisel that will cut most of this and we just need to basically take the chisel and drag it up until it drops right into my scribe line. And then we're going to go straight in like so. Well, let's do, since this is still attached here, we need to make this cut first. So we're going to go back and, you know, chop this away. Just go a little bit lighter chopping. So we're going about another sixteenth of an inch deep, right up against what we paired nicely so we have a, a good flat surface to put the chisel against. And we'll cut down along the sides of the pins. Now by doing this, what this does, this is make sure that there's cuts on these three sides so that when I make my cut coming in from the end of the board, this, these shavings should just fall away now. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Oh, come on. There it is. Again, we'll just drag the chisel until it's in the scribe line. Drag, and cut. Now, 
Now, the final check that we need to do is this, very similar to what we did when we were up in the vise. We're going to reassemble our square. And we're going to put the square right on the scribe line and make sure that the head of the square is sitting flat against the surface. And we're going to take that and just drag it in and make sure that the backs of this isn't going uphill this way. We're looking pretty good. Now I like to make a one final check looking at it in, in this direction and there's a few little places here that I need to uh, get in there and clean up with a with a chisel so I'm going to go back to the vise and just go ahead and clean those up you know quickly. And I want to make sure that these corners are cleaned out especially well. We want to have a good good sharp corner. If we don't have a sharp corner and it's sort of rounded off on there it tends to push the, uh, the part away. Okay so I'm pretty pleased with this. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to get we need to transfer these angles to the uh, tailboard. So let me just clean up a little bit here, get things out of the way. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to try and get this, uh, these, these uh, pins transferred to the, to the board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this up against the, uh, uh, the end of the board, the uh, piece of pine. I'm going to drag it forward until this scribe line catches right on the corner. And then I'm going to rock this forward and then I'm going to reach in here with a good sharp pencil and lay out the angles of the pins onto the tailboard. Beautiful. And if they didn't get quite into the corner, you'd have to finish those off. Now, what I need to do is I need to transfer square lines across the end of the tailboard. So I'll put this upright in the vise like this so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to go ahead and transfer these across like so. You want to be a little bit nice and accurate when you do this because if you're not, uh, it can throw your cuts off a bit. Okay, so one thing you have to re remember is that when I put the, uh, the draw front up against the uh, end of the board here and I drew my line, that you have to realize that that line is alongside of uh, the actual opening. So if I'm going to make my cuts, I have to make sure that I leave my pencil line. And if you start to take the pencil line away, what happens is that the, uh, the space that you're creating is too large and we start to get gaps around the, uh, uh, the, the tails. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put this back up in the vise this way and we'll go ahead and tilt this ever so slightly so that we're making cuts that are perfectly perpendicular. Now let's go ahead and grab the, uh, the dovetail saw and what, like I was saying before is when I make my cut here now, this, this is really craftsmanship. The idea is that if we can cut right to the side of the line and uh, the saw cuts are nice and smooth uh, without too much wandering, we'll be able to put this thing together without doing a whole lot of paring. So this is where the skill actually comes in is when we're sawing these. So look, what we need to do is go cut right down along the side of those pencil lines. And you notice I go on an angle. So I cut to the very, to the very corner of the board and then to the scribe line. And then I just follow down the back side of it what I've already cut. Nice easy cuts, gentle. Now when you're sawing, you want to almost not have any pressure on the saw handle at all and just let the weight of the saw do your cutting for you. Nice gentle cuts and you want to use the entire saw 
start off at the on the tip and make long cuts going right down to the side okay then we're going to go ahead and tilt this in the opposite direction and we're going to cut alongside here now what i usually do i'll stick a thumbnail right in the the uh, pencil line and that helps me to get it started Okay, now I'm just going to reach up and grab myself a, a crosscut saw. And we're going to use the crosscut saw to cut off these two end pins. Okay. Now we're going to go back over to the bench and we're going to get chop these out and uh, hopefully just put them together. Okay, uh, I'm going to grab myself a sacrificial piece of wood that I can put underneath here because I don't want to chop into my bench top. And one of the things that I always like to do is that since this was laid out on the inside of the, the drawer, um, I usually put the inside uh, surface down, the ones that have the pencil marks down like this, because this is the outside and I can chop fairly close to the line without any problem. And one of the things that could happen is if I chop and I miss, you know, miss cut and it chips out on one of the sides, it's to the inside of the drawer and it's not going to really see it. So, you know, uh, most people will pull out the drawer and they go, oh, look at that. Those are really nice looking dovetails. So, so we'll put that face down like this. We'll clamp it to the bench. And tighten that up. And we'll grab a chisel that'll fit in between uh, these lines here. And we're going to stay a sixteenth of an inch away. And ever so carefully, we're just going to chop right down through to the other side. Now you notice that those popped out there, so I'm just going to uh, just go ahead and tap those back into their opening. And push them out of the way. Now what you're going to notice that we still have our scribe line here. So we need to either go into the vise and score, uh, pair to our line, or we can just go ahead and try and cut it down this way so sometimes I'll go halfway through on one side like this and then flip it over and come in from the opposite side or you can put it upright in the vise like so and pair in across this way and then spin it around and then come in from the opposite direction. Now with this upright in the vise, I usually will take care of the end pins as well since we haven't, haven't cut to our scribe line here. So, so we'll go ahead and take a paring chisel, slide it up into the line and make a slicing cut going across and make a nice smooth cut. And then we'll come in from the opposite direction. And now I need to check to make sure that all the material is out of here and that my corners are good and square. Okay. Looks like we're pretty close to what we need. And we'll grab our pin board. Hold this upright. 
I'm going to grab a hammer to tap it together with and have to find the inside. Inside's going that way. We'll just get that started. We'll put a sacrificial piece of wood on the top and just drive that in. And there you have it. So once we have that driven into, into place, this would be the drawer that would fit into the opening. And then we need to clean off the sides. So we'll take a hand plane and clean this up nicely. pretty nice. No gaps on the inside. The pins, the tails, it's nicely fit. No gaps along the end. So that's the art of dovetailing. Let me show you just a couple other dovetail uh, uh, scenarios and uh, we'll be on our way. Okay. Uh, these are just a couple other dovetails that I'd like to show you. These are actually some beveled dovetails. So if you look at the, uh, this would be a, you know, a drawer that would have an angled side uh, or a Bombay chest, which would have a curve on the inside of the, the case. And uh, these are all cut, you know, with a, a, a um, it's called a compound angle dovetail because the drawer front is tilted in one direction. Uh, the drawer side is tilted in another direction. And uh, when these come apart, they're really quite strange looking uh, dovetails. And as you can see, instead of these going straight in, they're on quite an angle and on an angle here as well. And the way that these are sort of cut, they're on an angle going across the ends of this as well. A little bit more complicated than the one that we just did. And then we have one last one that I'd like to show you, which is sort of the ultimate uh, thing in dovetailing. It actually looks like a miter joint, but if you take it apart, it's actually dovetailed on the inside, and it's what we call a blind miter dovetail. So this miter actually is what, you know, uh, joins together and disguises the entire joint on the inside. So there you go, folks. This is the real art of dovetailing. I'm Phil Lowe at the Furniture Institute, and this is the art of woodworking. Thanks so much.